listen, let's start do this. Then Go. we'll chat afterwards, okay? Yeah, so it's no down. worries, mate. Let, let, me, let me just, you check all the things. How's the mic? Because I've got a few. Everything, got everything's time brilliant. Time. You're looking great. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> It's the one and only Steve Norman is with us on Switchbox TV. He's look, hey, you're looking fantastic. Lockdown agrees with you, I think. Oh, uh, well, I was very lucky, Rob, to uh, get locked down in Brighton, where, which is where I sort of try to live most of the time. And uh, yeah, here it is. And weather's been amazing. Paddleboard, get yourself a paddleboard and head for Brighton. It's great. Now, now, now listen, I, I, a little bird, a little bird told me that you've been paddleboarding. So tell, tell everybody I you, think, who, I just think this is fantastic. Go on, tell me all about uh, it. Uh, well, it was my birthday in what, 25th of March. So um, Sabrina, my girlfriend, who luckily got, was in lockdown with me and my mother, who I've been caring for for some time now. And um, so we've, we've really, as bad as it, it's been, the whole virus thing. I, I really understand the tragic, but everyone's got a different story. And you know, sure. my, my lockdown is one of the best things that ever happened because, um, you know, as I say, my mum was sick, spent, uh, been caring for her. She's just popped into hospital for a little while now, but it gives me a little bit more time. Uh, but it just gives you all that sort of, you know, that yeah. special time with my mum. She's getting on, you know, and, and my Brilliant. Sabrina got locked down with me. She's normally in Berlin or I'm, and I'm there with her some, you know, most of the time as well. So we've, we've had a great time, you know, I have to say. And that last few days, had that, had that paddle board since March and uh, me and my, my son came around and he looked, he had a look and he said, Dad, would you reckon now, you know, we've got a couple of days. And off we went. Oh, it's great. It's opened it all up. You know, it's like that. the sea is literally across the, the road, you know, and I never, I hardly ever go there because I never got time. So it's great. Paddle boarding. Get a nice colour as well. <laughs> How far did you go out on paddle boarding? We went quite w away. I mean, it, you know, I mean, it's only a couple of days that we've been doing it, really. I mean, it's a, it, Sabrina hasn't done it yet. She's been working from home. But, you know, Jack got up on it straight away. I'm, I'm one of those, you go to those white knuckle theme parks. So I'm, I'm not scared of much, but I don't like the sort of white knuckle stuff. I prefer that little yeah. monorail that goes at the top very slowly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Around the <laughs> whole park. I sit there with a, a beer and I love it. I just go around again and again and again. <laughs> So, so I like the chill of it, and it's it's weird because I've been surfing. I like to surf occasionally, and you sort of look at the surf and you go, right, surfs up, and you get excited. With paddleboard, and it's surfs down. You know, you just want it flat, and it, you just connect. You, see, you just connect. It's brilliant, and dis I, disconnect I, as well. Yeah, I, I'm um since Jaws of people of my generation. You see, even on a paddleboard in, in the sea in the English Channel, I'd just be looking for that. Mate, yeah. I, the only, that, yeah, I mean, they have it. They, you know why they didn't make a. F <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, though. That, you know, they've, I got that, but, I, I, you know, they made a film called Jaws for a big reason. You know, those are horrible geezers in there. There are. <laughs> but they didn't make a film called Crabs, did they? No? Or, or like Nipple, Nipples, you know, that Jaws. <laughs> They're not that bad, mate. <laughs> Brilliant. I have to say though, we're on it, and I'm in it. I'm in and out, and in and out, and diving down. It was brilliant. It was so so much fun. Dad, and Jack goes, uh, Dad, just look over there. And it was like a, a whole sort of swarm of of Medusa jellyfish. You know those, yeah. uh, not the long Portuguese men of war, a box for it, box jellyfish. Yeah, box, just yeah. Those sort of jelly ones, and it, and the jelly's all right. But if you flip them over and they got a little tentacle, that's what you want to avoid. You can actually put yeah. the jelly of a jellyfish. It's not going to hurt you, but don't don't sort of splash the the tentacle in your <laughs> eye um, you know, as you're throwing it back in. You, know. you, watch, you used to watch Jack Cousteau as a kid. <laughs> oh, always, didn't you? Yeah, and Robinson Crusoe and all those things. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, brilliant. Listen, man. have you had time during lockdown? Um, we've all had time to reflect and whatnot. Have you been doing any writing or uh, do well, musicians or just chill chill out? Or do you just suddenly think, oh, I'll tell you what, I'll take things in a different direction or, or what? Well, do you know, I mean, uh, uh, certain musicians uh, that have really made all their dosh, you know, there's different ways of looking at it because uh, musicians generally, are ge uh, you know, I mean, I've got, I've got, you know, I'm, I'm an artist as well and I've got Spando and that, but I still have to work, you know, I'm not, I can't retire and nor would I want to. Um, hmm. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm okay that, you know, I, 
it, it makes me nervous because I do have to work by in a few months time. That's it. It's going to run out. You know, your, your outgoings and whatever. You imagine if you're yeah. not in Spandau Ballet and you're, and you're a musician yeah. who suddenly cannot work anymore. That, that's, that's the way it's hit everyone. And I really hope that people look at the musicians now as they are. You know, there's a little bit of a front line with musicians. I think, you know, you can't do without music. If, you, if we don't support pop mm -hmm. music, as well as people, we seem to be supporting classical music, um, then, it, you know, you're not going to get the next bands coming through and, because people, there's no money in it. There's no money in record sales. Yeah, you have to play live if, you, if you're not writing the songs or producing them or, you know, you, uh, or um, you've got generous people in the band that share it out a little bit. So you, you, need, to, um, you need to work. And, uh, and, uh, and people, a lot of my friends are calling. They dev they're absolutely don't know what to do. So it's very, very no, bad, absolutely. you know, really bad. You know, yeah. people sort of don't give the value to musicians as much as they. I'm not talking about myself. I agree. You know, but, um, and, and it's the same with, in any, any sort of industry where you, you rely on sort of a group of people in a room, you know, yeah. to whatever numbers. Yeah, it's a tragic um, situation, but it will, mess, it will mix it up for the future, I hope, really, you know, going positive forward. Um, I, I was going to leave this to the last question because that's the way, that's the way we roll. But yeah. I, I can't, now you just mentioned it there. So when are you getting back together? When are Spandau getting back together? Only because everybody's battered me because they, you know, yeah, know get away I know. to, I, know. I mean, talk Spurs in a minute and obviously, yeah. but when you get... <laughs> Uh, I miss a fa it, I know, yeah. Never <laughs> that, say never, man. Yeah, that, well, that's what I always say. Never say never. And I'm not one for, for, you know, destroying people's dreams, especially the fans, who are really the only ones who seem to be sort of behind the whole thing. The, the band itself, we're not. We're not a band at the moment. Mm. I don't know what to say. You know, it's, we don't talk. I haven't spoken to the guys in, uh, well, over a year, you know. I speak Seriously? to... Seriously? speak to Tony and we fell out you know so it's a bit it, it, it doesn't matter I, I, we fall out us a lot and then you know I, I people say so if you'd have asked me this a year and a, and, uh, and a little bit ago I'd have gone naked themselves you know but that's not yeah. Spandau that it depends what you, how you refer to Spandau when people talk to me about Spandau it's like well okay we're talking about your vision of it the group uh, you know, yeah. or the package, or you're talking about the individuals. I, I, I look at the individuals, be, and, and when they get to my nerves, it's like, well, they can go do one. But <laughs> so you can edit that a bit, but I didn't mean to be rude. Yeah, I don't want to be rude or bitter or anything like that. But right at the moment, I, you know, even if we had a lead singer, which we don't, um, you know, I, I'm certainly not focusing on that because you, you're left hanging because we don't mm. communicate. So, you know, you clear your diary and then you haven't got any work for you because mm. um, someone changed their minds without consulting the rest of the band. So is, it, is, it, is it because it tends in, in families, if you fall out, they tend to be proper fallouts. Is it because you were so close? I mean, yeah. you know, and you're, you're in each other's yeah, pockets, you've lived, you, you know, you, you know what Tony Abney's doing before Tony Abney's gonna do, yeah. when you're that Well, I get it from my mum, because my mum, yeah, beg your pardon for talking over you, but um, my, 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 the reason why me and Tony are, are, are pals and on talking terms, like I always will be with all the band, but, you know, we, go, we've, we drift in and out of each other's, you know, and, and uh, it's just that my mum, having been sick, I'm talking to sure. Tony's mum all the time because they're, the be they're best mates. They always yeah. have been. So it just, it was like, it doesn't make any sense why, you know, we're, I'm, we're talking around all these things and I'm like, mm. oh, Tony, how are you, you know? Just get over it. It's the same for every member of the band for me. You know, when I look at them, I give them a little bit of distance because I, I really don't want to see them for a little while, if I'm honest. And then, and then after a while, you can't stop thinking about them because it, they, they are like family. And you don't, I don't want to lose all my memories um, like it happened before 20, 30 years ago. You know, we split up big time, went to court, beat each other up. And then, and then all of a sudden we got back together and it was like, it was the most wonderful feeling for me because I could then get my memories back. I could think about all those times we had together growing up, going to school together, you know, becoming um, men from boys. And, and uh, I, don't, I want to be able to look at that with fondness, not bitterness. So, but at the moment, not yet. So, so if they want to get together, they ain't got a sex player, or at least they ain't got the original members. <laughs> but I'm not making a big <laughs> thing of it. Don't worry, they're, they're all the fans, don't worry. I'm, so, I'm sure at some point in the future, you know, if we're all still alive, got to think about that. Yeah, there you go. I watched Soul Boys of the Western World, bizarrely, 
Um, Why bizarrely, what, Rob? Well, because right. when I when I do these interviews, the, you end up like a, I feel like a stalker. So I like yeah. suddenly I'll go, oh, I'll have a look at Steve's Twitter oh, feed, yeah. and I'll I've got Google it, and so you'll, and you know because you they, they say it's research. I kind of feel I'm stalking people. So <laughs> I was, I just wonder how he, I was fascinated by it. I mean, it was just brilliant. How do you? When you watched it, did you go, geez, I was good looking. Not that you're not now, but you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, wow, wasn't that brilliant, wasn't that? And also the second question is, how the hell have you survived, is my other question. <laughs> um, I, it's a really, have I survived? I don't know. I mean, I still sort of, <laughs> still drink and all that. I've not had to give anything up, except a bit of cheese, which really got on my nerves. I just get low fat <laughs> cheese now. <laughs> But I don't know. I just think, you know, whenever anyone says to me, oh, I don't drink, I always go, oh, what, you overdid it then? <laughs> Back in the 80s or what? <laughs> Maybe I'll just kept this side of it. Music keeps you young. I've been lucky. I lived in Spain in Nibita for t over 12 years. I live now by the sea. I've got, a, you know, I've got an incredible girlfriend and uh, Sabrina, who's also my manager. And, you know, she's really helped me out in a lot of things. I don't know. I, I feel good in myself. I've got, I really mm. I love my family. I love my friends. They are family and, you know, and, and the fans and everything, you know, I do gigs with my band, uh, the sleeves and, you know, we're going out next year and they, and the fans just follow us around as soon as we put the dates, on, so, you know, they come from Australia, from, from New Zealand, every gig or a little bunch together, they'll be over from, from like literally the other side of the world. And that, and that, I guess, appreciation, it just just makes you feel good. It makes it it does put a spring in my step. I will say, and uh, you know, you asked me before about the lockdown. You know what I've been doing? Music. I've been picking the guitar up because I haven't had a chance to be here. This is my place here in Brighton. It's only a flat. It's not a big massive house or anything. Yeah. And I've got a little studio, a little behind me there. It's a corner of a Brilliant. quite large sitting room. I've got the dining table stroke office. This is what people do all the time. You know what I mean? You have to multi sort of use things for different things. It's great. Garden, sea, troop train station. What else do you need? You know, I'm like half an hour from Gatwick on a plane, Berlin. Got me chick there. You know, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm sorted, mate. And that keeps you good. Uh, people suffer and, and have suffered and will suffer a lot more than I do, let's say. I've got, I've got it easy compared to some people. In fairness, though, you have suffered because you're a Spurs fan, haven't you? I mean, come on. <laughs> Thanks, man. What are you against? Come on. City, it can't be easy. It can't be it? easy. Come on. <laughs> oh, it's terrible, isn't it? I mean, I, I did. I liked Potch. I thought, no, Mourinho, give we me a chance. Loved him. Even, even yeah. non Spurs fans loved him. I don't get that, really. I, I'm, I'm saddened by that. In fact, I think last, last time we chatted, wasn't, wasn't it like we, Spurs had done well, got into the Champions League, I think? At that point, yeah, probably, and uh, yeah, and, and it was, you were asking me about Poch then, and, and I, I think I said something about his ma man management, like like Mourinho, you know, you got to get the best out of people. If you lose a dressing room or you you have you haven't got respect, then that's half the battle, isn't it? You know, I'm sure most managers know it. <laughs> it's all sort of try and see as far as tactics are concerned. You know, I'm, they all know enough, but once you lose that dressing room, you ain't got the respect of the players. You've lost it. Um, and, I, and I think Poch was doing really well. He just had a little dip. Why would you sack someone? That's happening too much in football, isn't it? There's no loyalty at all. It's a bit like bands, really. There's no loyalty in bands anymore, is there? Well, um, how, how far do you go back? And <laughs> how far do you go back with Spurs? And is there a, an era or a player that you go, yeah, he's, right. he was my, he's my number one. He was, he was my era. Well, it, you know what? I mean, I, I, I am at a... Be this is a weird one right? because I, I was an Arsenal supporter until I was seven because I, li yeah. I lived on the um, place called Twyford House. It was an estate, like a Peabody estate, uh, just off the Blackstock Road, uh, which is, and you could, it was almost overlooking the Arsenal ground. You know, you, you, could, you could see like a third of the pitch. And I lived at the top on the block, block of flats on the corner bit where they put all the washing out. Yeah? So at the back of the washing area, there was a great view of the of like a, a third of the pitch, and um, all the kids used to come up from the estate round to mine because I was the nearest, um, and we used to sit there, and we used to be like, "Yeah, come on, you'd be like that," and then like you'd be sitting there for a little while because it had gone up the other end, <laughs> and it didn't matter what they were doing at our end. We just go, "Yeah," you couldn't see it; it was so far away, you know. 
Um, so I was an Arsenal fan until I was seven. And then my uncle, he, he took me to every sort of Tottenham game up the Seven Sisters Road. Uh, every two weeks, there I was going up and down the Seven Sisters Road. Gilzine, uh, Martin Peters sat next to both of them. Watch, I think it was Stoke. I think it was. I watched um, Cyril Knowles, that's it. But even before, you know when he dribbled that ball across the line to get it? Yeah, out? yeah, I remember it. I was there. I was, in that. was that Stoke? I can't remember. I saw that one. I think I saw wow. it, or did I? I'm pretty sure I saw it. I wouldn't have seen it on telly. I don't think we had a telly back then. And um, yeah, and uh, uh, well, saw Georgie Best play there. Jimmy Greaves was the one at that era. Uh, he was Brilliant. definitely one for me at that period. Um, I will, f to, just to finish the, um, the uh, going to the dark side, if you like, <laughs> you know, I, I've, had, uh, I've had that same story with, uh, I, I do a lot of things musically that involve sort of sports and footballers and that. So I've, I've got a few pals and one of them is Paul Walsh, um, who used to play for Spurs. Great pal, City. good, good pal of mine, great pal. Really? Oh, he's great. I, I love Paul, he's brilliant. And, uh, and anyway, he was telling me, he said, oh my God, that, he's got the exact same story as me, but in reverse. <laughs> so he lived overlooking the, uh, the, the Tottenham ground and his uncle, uh, bizarre coincidence, took him, like mine did, to the other end of Seven Sisters Road to every Arsenal home game. So he went to the dark, to his dark side, you know. I, think, uh, I thought that was quite a nice, yeah, that's great coincidence, isn't it? But at the moment, I'm, I'm at that unchoosing thing. I won't take, I won't choose sides. I mean, a lot of things, we, we, I, I do realise that, you know, you're choosing everything as soon as you're born. You know, left, right, red, black. Tories, um, Labour, whatever, Duran, Spandau, Stones, Beatles. You've got to go for one or the other. Otherwise, there's someone who's, you know. And it's like, why should I? I'm going to choose. I love football. Now, I'll always be a Spurs fan. And I'll always be a little bit pleased when, it, like, if Arsenal hadn't won the FA Cup the other day. <laughs> you know what I mean? I would have been a little bit more pleased than I was a little bit gutted. <laughs> but only a little bit. <laughs> so I love football. And I want to stay like that. I want to respect and keep clear and no filter with anything. And it's the same with football, man. It should be number one. Who do you, you know, what do you support? I love football and that's it. Yeah. But come uh, on, listen. toys. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I want to, I want to, because I, 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 I don't want to keep you too long. You, you, I was just chatting. Right. Chatting to a, a, a pal of ours uh, this 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 morning about you, and he said, "Ask him about Live Aid." Mm -hmm. And I just yeah. suddenly thought, "Why why don't I ask you about Live Aid?" Because you know, it's wherever you go, whatever you do in your life, you'll always go. I I, I played Live yeah, Aid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it it was. It, it, you look. Have you watched it back? Or do you do yeah, you get asked? I, about yeah, I I haven't. I hadn't watched it back for. Uh, for some time, um, and then um, I think it was about three or four years ago. Our dear friend John Till, we got a mutual friend, haven't we, John Till? Yeah. And and he um, and he started. I went round to his. Um, he lives in Lytham, and um, he said, oh, "I've been watching Live Aid," and I don't know. I don't like watching things back. I know mm. I hardly ever, once things are recorded. That's it. It's done. And I don't go. I don't visit them. I, I only thought the other day. I I haven't heard the first album for since it was made in its entirety spandau that's 40 years ago coming up mm -hmm. you know things like that i just don't like it i'm very critical and i, I think oh i sound like a i don't know um I, I just don't sound like i would like myself to sound you know i don't like the sound of my own voice i don't like what i say i'm super cri critical of what i play and what i wear and all those things and you look at live aid and i'm wearing two blouses you know, one, one is a, a yellow one and the other one is like a purple blouse. What's that about? The most biggest important event in your life and you've got two blouses on and one, and you've got the haircut, that mullet, which was a dead ringer for Alison Moyer on the day. So I could, when, whenever we're doing like a group photo, I'm looking around to make sure she's not there so I can go stay away from her. <laughs> yeah, but look, Alison Moyer and me, same hairstyle. But you know that apart, <laughs> that apart, I tell you, it was fantastic that day. It was all about, uh, you know, no one had the. Um, hang on a minute, this is driving me mad. I got, I got alarms coming off out of my head here. Yeah. Sorry about this, everybody. You no, know, this it's is like really welcome to the no. real, welcome to life. It gets in the way occasionally, doesn't it? You know, right. Yeah. That's that. Go away. And um, yeah, so it was, yeah, but that, the whole day, you know, we flew over on like a, we went out the day before for rehearsal. So it's just normal going out there. That was wonderful, wandering around like Wembley Stadium. 
and um, mm. just shooting my video camera. That you saw Soul Boys of the Western World, right? All that backstage yeah. footage at Live Aid is mine. That's all, all the backstage stuff is mine. On that, to be fair, that's because usually on things like that, you know, when it's so big, you, yeah, whatever. But to actually have the the um, what's the word the self-awareness or the awareness to go I'll tell you what I'm going to film this or whatever that's amazing yeah I mean I, it wasn't that it was self-awareness it, it, I was just like I wanted to record all my mates you know oh. I didn't really think at the time whenever I filmed this is for uh, posterity or anything no it was like so we can have a good old laugh later and look back on mm. it because we're all in it you know uh, that was more but looking I, I actually just before that, I'd found all these tapes doing a bit of research and I was stalking things and as you do, you know, and, um, and, uh, and I found all uh, like two, two tapes of Live Aid on it and a lot of other stuff as well, which I still haven't seen. Um, and so I sort of put that towards it. I found one after it was made. There's another Live Aid tape and I went, wow. oh my goodness, who knows what's on that? Hardly anyone did backstage stuff. You know, all the, all the sort of stuff with Quo by the side of the stage. That you know, doing the in the sound check, not a big quo fan. Spend my money, and we're on side. We got we got like there's us, there's Geldof, and I'm moving the camera around, and there's Geldof, and we're all going. You know, it was the first band to open up Live Aid, wasn't it? And they were rehearsed, and I knew them as well. So everyone's going hey to the camera like you do, you know, in interviews, you know. Queen walking around, yeah, because it's me. If that had been at like BBC, they would have been a bit more sort of serious about it, I think. So th that's what I love about that because you know each other. People tend, you, you get a relaxed sort of, sort of uh, response from them, you know. Um, oh, it was just a, an incredible event, really. I, remember, I do remember, I don't remember much on stage, but I, I do remember jumping off for the true solo and uh, jumping back on thinking, at least tight, I had white trousers and they were quite tight. And I thought, if they give now, <laughs> I'm leaving the band, that's it. You know, as you're jumping up the rise though, you know. <laughs> Probably wouldn't have been a bad shout looking back on it. But, um, <laughs> hey, listen, <laughs> listen, listen, on that note, hey, do you know what? Great talking to you as always. You too, mate, you too. And yeah, also, you can do for me because we we it's not usually me it's um it's a pal of mine that does does all our music stuff so when you've got some music you want to show us well you, please absolutely please come on. Man. That, and we'll do, really... love to do that with you thank and, you um, yeah and we, um i've got well, his um, anything anything new anything you want to tell I, us I, about I'm to, Give us a shout yeah. on whatsapp Come on and do it for us, show yeah, us it. Yeah, we'll we do. I mean, fantastic. I've got to get my head around the sort of next plans, really. It's been, it's all, it's been all about my mum, if I'm honest. So, sure. so you sure. know, it's, and there hasn't been much time to do things. Yeah. And I've been, but I have been grabbing my guitar, um, yeah. which I rarely have a chance to do because I'm so busy doing everything or traveling. Or this. So new things are very far and few between. I've got so many sort of, you know, dictaphone ideas because of the guitar. It's all here. The studio's up and running again. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm sort of, it's, I'm in a place now where I want to be as far as I've like, been able to work with music again. Got new tunes, going out on tour with my band next year. You know, I also work with 80s Pioneers. We did that a year ago coming up, you know. I don't know if you know about 80s Pioneers. That was put on hold. You know, it's, uh, well, check it out. It's, I mean, last year we put together myself and Sabrina. Uh, it's our idea. And we put together the show. We put the show together, that's it. With, with like eighties pioneers, is it Mark Armand? Yeah. You know, Paul Young. Sorry, Carol. All that. So you yeah, playing exactly, with yeah. Yeah. Nick Van Ayn? Who was there? Uh, yeah, Limo. When um, um, we'll keep in touch. Anything yeah. new? We, we want to hear know, it here. Great man, thank you. And it'd be you know it'd be a great way to to disseminate it all. Um, you know what's going on now. And uh, thank you for your help and your support. Really, you've always been there. Thank you, Rob. And thank you to everyone thank, thank for checking in. He's take, all right. He's all care. right. Don't listen to what they say about this man because he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, I'll see you later. See you soon. Cheers, Cheers pal. Bye. All the best. <laughs> oh, gone bald. <laughs>